<sighs> Men suck. Okay, so if you're anything like me, Barbie was truly the easiest it could get in the year 2023. Oh right, I forgot about that. Same taste, different day. Barbie, much like Super Mario Bros, was a movie that really had everything going for it and pretty much lined up on a silver platter for a moderately successful summertime blockbuster hit. A marketable and recognizable IP that was able to appeal to all demographics and hasn't been destroyed by modern Hollywood? Check. A familiar lead that is actually talented at her craft with box office appeal? Check. Propelled by a wave of positive social media influence that has created this sort of must-see cultural and theatrical event with an additional movie? Check. Backed by a well-known and successful studio? <clears throat> Backed by a well-known and at least a studio with money? <sighs> Let's just be real. It was Margot Robbie playing Barbie. What else is there really to say? But unfortunately, as we all know, there is more to say. Much more. A movie that you would think, and a marketing campaign to back it up, you would feel like this movie was going to be a light-hearted, self-aware comedy, making self-aware jokes and utilizing the full extent of its star-studded cast. With, yes, a trickle of some female empowerment throughout the film of girls learning about who they are and what they can be. And that's all good and all, and honestly a message and ideal that the majority of people would never really bat an eye at. But no, my dear viewer, that's not Barbie. Close your eyes now and imagine everything I said, reverse the steps, ramp up the female empowerment to about a thousand, take away the lesson that was meant for little girls and apply that to the modern woman who hates the world and the people in it. Comedy so divisive and on the nose that it would only reach the demographic of people writing this piece of garbage in a star-studded cast that was obviously just here because of the big old paycheck that's probably going to bounce at Warner Brothers anyway. It was as if this movie was written for a body of work of another actress, and due to scheduling issues, there needed to be a recast. And yes, a recast was made, and it seems as if all was in the clear. But you see, a revision to the script was never made. A new actress, but same message. Almost as if the script was made for someone else. Hmm. Point is, Barbie hates men. Or at least the writers of this movie do. Miss Gao welcomes you to the club, Greta. But in order to get to that point, we might as well talk about the movie. And I hope those mimosas from your Barbie brunch are still in effect. You're gonna need them. Barbie follows Barbie. In Barbie land, a maybe fantasy land where everything is ran by Barbies. Lawyer Barbie, Dr. Barbie, President Barbie, and of course, Stereotypical Barbie. A place where everything is perfect, every day. Until it isn't, and Margot Barbie starts having a midlife crisis in the middle of a dance party. And needless to say, that's not what Margot Barbie usually is supposed to think about. With the addition of now being flat-footed, Margot Barbie takes a trip to Weird Barbie. A Barbie that was played a little bit too rough. And honestly, what most of these Barbies should probably look like. But hey, shut up. It's Margot Barbie time. To speed this all up, because honestly I'm losing brain cells even remembering this turd, Barbie has to travel to the real world in order to find the little girl who's been playing with her in order for her to be happy again so she can go back to not being flat-footed and hating her life. So, into the real world we go. Mom, are you really gonna let Barbie take you and your tween daughter to an imaginary land? Yes, and you wanna know why? Because I never get to do anything. I didn't even go on that cruise I won at your school raffle because I didn't have enough vacation days and your dad's allergic to sun. No, 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 no. Let's, let's go back to Barbie land. <sighs> Meet tween. The girl who Margot Barbie thinks is originally the girl who was playing with her, but in a plot twist that you see coming from a mile away, Margot Barbie's actual little girl turns out to be Tween's mom. A mom going through a midlife crisis who... shines her thoughts onto Margot Barbie. The implications of that is obviously insane, but it doesn't really matter because I forgot to mention Ken. Or Beach Ken. Margot Barbie's Ken. 
And since Margot Barbie's Ken decided to tag along, in the real world, he discovers the patriarchy. You see, my dear viewer, Beach Ken is an accessory. It's Barbie and Ken. What is a Ken without his Barbie? Which begs the question, what is a Ken when his Barbie doesn't even like him and treats him like a carton of spoiled milk? Unfortunately, you get Patriarchy Ken. So with that, Patriarchy Ken decides to bring back some male respect to Barbie Land. And in a matter of a couple hours, he somehow manages to turn what was a successful matriarchy Barbie Land into modern day Miami. But through the power of her newfound femininity and with the help of Mother of the Year, she manages to unbrainwash all of the Barbies from liking modern day Miami. Good for you, Barbie. And while you might think that a competent writer who doesn't project their own insecurities to the world would end the movie off with a message of recognizing the flaws of both systems, coming to the conclusion that the best way forward for society is to do it together, as men and women, to put aside the differences of gender and recognize that everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses, and only together could a greater and more prosperous society bloom. What is the message here? Yes, while well, obviously I took away the glaring fact that men suck, what is the real goal or message here? Who is the target audience for a movie like this? You can tell that Warner Brothers was desperate with this one and wasn't ready to have yet another flop on their hands to add to the collection. So they did their best, and successfully and understandably so, to hide what Barbie was really about. After the mishandling and mismanaged release of Marvel's She-Hulk, a show that managed to somehow divide a fandom on par with Lucasfilm's The Last Jedi, a show with similar messages that on the surface seem as if they have much to say about society and the best way to go about it. But when you take a deeper look within, it's just mindless, insecure, and generalized hatred for an entire group of people that 99% of those people don't even know you exist. The fictional bubble that Hollywood exists in, a bubble that Hollywood executives think is reality, is not an actual reflection of the real world. It's as if Hollywood executives live in a Barbie land themselves, but instead of a pink matriarchal utopia, it's a grim Gotham City type environment where every man is out to harm, attack, or belittle women at every opportunity they get with no end in sight which just simply isn't the case in actual society. But unfortunately, when you give that beaten down person some creative freedom and a little bit of money, what you get is Barbie, a morally bankrupt and depressing hate message packaged in some pink fluff and masked by the appeal of Margot Barbie in order to get those butts in seats. But with the cat now out of the bag, I can't imagine a very appealing second weekend drop for Barbie and Warner Brothers as a whole <laughs> which is just fine by me. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. As always, comment down below how you guys felt about Barbie, Margot Barbie as a whole. As a man, did you feel as if you sucked by the end of the film? And as a woman, do you feel as if all men suck? Man... It's crazy that I even have to ask something like that. We are fucked. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.